Coming up on DTNS, is Samsung throttling your apps? HTC shouts out Metaverse while returning to the smartphone battle and a machine that can make any drink you want. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, March 3rd, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And coming from the backyard barbecue, your boy, Chris Ashley. <laughs> Draw the top tech stories from Cleveland. I'm Len Peralta. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. We are just talking a bunch about chicken wings. So if you don't want to be hungry, don't. Go subscribe to Good Day Internet and become a patron at patreon.com slash DTNS. Big thanks to our top patrons, including Ken Hayes, Philip Shane, and Paul Boyer. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Security firm Cleafy. Uh, that's C-L-E-A-F-Y, reported Tuesday that a malicious app called QR Code and Barcode Scanner, it's a QR code app, but at least it appears to be, was downloaded more than 10,000 times from Google Play before Cleafy reported it and Google removed it. Why'd they report it? Well, the malicious app contained T-Bot, a remote access trojan or rat that can do things like steal your passwords, look at your text messages, access all your confidential data. This particular version of T-Bot targeted banking, insurance, and cryptocurrency apps. The app did not contain T-Bot at download. That's how it was able to get in the Play Store. But it would prompt users shortly after installation to apply an update. And the update was not pulled from the Play Store. It was pulled from GitHub uh, and was able to install T-Bot there. I wonder how they knew this would work. Because, you know, the modern phones, they have QR code scanners built in. So I'm, I just I, that's what's fascinating to me about yeah, this. It never ceases to amaze me how the, you can get people to do things that they don't even need to do anyway. QR code. Hmm. <sighs> Amazon will close all of its Amazon books, Amazon 4 store, Star, and Amazon pop-up shops. That's a total of 68 stores across the U.S. and the U.K., just another example of brick and mortar stores getting driven out of business by Amazon. This case itself. Uh, the company said it's going to focus its retail efforts on its grocery stores, Amazon Fresh, Whole Foods Market, and Amazon Go. Uh, it remains committed to long-term physical retail concepts like its style clothing stores. Uh, it's also developing platforms for use by other retailers. Sennheiser announced new earbuds that are 3D printed with the material used in drill bits on the Mars rover. Or, if you don't want to read their press release version of it, Sennheiser launched metal earbuds. But the metal's zirconium, uh, so it resists corrosion and is lightweight and durable. That's the reason they're doing it. And it has the usual rubber tips, so it shouldn't be more uncomfortable than any other plastic earbud. The IE600, as it is called, uh, are wired earbuds as well, not wireless. Uh, and that's so they can support lossless audio. The cable is replaceable. Uh, it, it plugs in on the end with the earbuds, so if it gets worn out, you can swap it out. Uh, they will be coming this spring for a mere 699 euros. Aside from looking super cool, like the metal looks like a like a, a weight plate, like the forty five mm -hmm. pound plate. Yeah, like it yeah, looks you're right. really yeah. cool. Um, but man, the price tag on that, yikes! Yeah, that, that's, that's 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 a grip. I mean, six hundred ninety nine euros is pretty close to seven hundred dollars. It depends on the day, but you know it's probably around seven fifty or something like that, somewhere in between there. Yeah. Uh, if you've looked at all the people driving Teslas these days and thought oh, it's just not the status symbol it used to be, may we present? The Ark One, a 24-foot-long electric boat that is backed by Will Smith, Kevin Durant, and Diddy, Sean Combs. It'll cost you $300,000, too, so you won't look cheap if you buy one. Ark released new images and video of a pre-production model of the Ark One. has a top speed of 40 miles per hour, lasts four hours under power on a charge, and the battery is 220 kilowatt hours, powering a 500 horsepower engine. Arc CEO Mitch Lee would like you to know that that engine is three times the size of a Tesla Model Y battery pack. Uh, if you'd like, you can reserve one right now. There's a refundable $1,000 deposit required, and they say they're going to start delivering them this summer. The fact that he put, I don't understand why that matters. <laughs> well, because the reason you're buying one of these is to be able to say things like that to the, your friends when they come I over guess. to hang out on your boat. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got a roundup of Ukrainian news here. Netblocks reports a telecom outage in northeastern Ukraine in Sumy Oblast. Uh, residents of the region reported blasts coming from a power plant. This is the first widespread major 
telecom outage since the war in Ukraine began. Uh, there's also a bunch of tech company reactions. Poland's CD Projekt Red is going to halt all game sales in Russia and Belarus. Oracle and SAP have stopped all business and sales in Russia. Spotify has closed its offices in Russia indefinitely, though the service itself remains operational. RT America is shutting down in the United States and laying off its staff. TripAdvisor and Google Maps have stopped users from posting new reviews on their listings in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. They were being used to spread non-review-related content like news. The GitHub repository for the Facebook-maintained React open-source library was spammed with protest messages. Russian regulator Roskomnadzor ordered the Russian version of Wikipedia to roll back edits from articles related to the war or be blocked. The Wikimedia Foundation responded that it will not comply with those requests. Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency said it will no longer sell rocket engines to the United States, which may affect flights by Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket. And Roscosmos paused a planned launch to deliver satellites for satellite ISP OneWeb. OneWeb is owned by India's telco Bharti, but has a major investment from the UK government, as well as SoftBank and UTELSAT. Mm. All right, you're caught up on the tech-related uh, aspects of the war in Ukraine. Let's talk about a phone now, Chris. What do we got? So HTC's vice president of Asia-Pacific region told DigiTimes that the company will come out with a new smartphone in April. HTC hasn't released a new flagship phone in three years. He said the phone would have metaverse features. Mm. <laughs> Stop the eye roll just okay. for a moment. HTC's last phone in 2018 was the Exodus One blockchain phone, and it did support decentralized apps, built-in cryptocurrency wallets, and the ability to mine very small amounts of cryptocurrency. All right. We can argue about what good a blockchain phone is, but at least in that case, HTC was true to its word. It delivered what it said it was going to do. So what would a metaverse, metaverse phone be? HTC announced its Viverse platform at World Mobile Congress, MWC, that will someday include VR, XR, NFTs, and, oh heck, they threw in 5G and blockchain too, because why not? Uh, and don't forget, HTC's Vive headsets are legit VR headsets. So a smartphone that tied into all of that could legitimately be called a metaverse phone, especially if it tied into platforms like Microsoft's Mesh, or Qualcomm Snapdragon Spaces. Folks, let your imagination run wild because HTC is not talking yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the one hand, I kind of hate that they're like, hey, uh, we have a new smartphone coming out in April. Metaverse! Uh, <laughs> in order to, to get everyone to pay attention. I mean, honestly, HTC just announcing that they have a new phone is all they needed to get my attention. I'm like, oh, really? It's a flagship phone from HTC. Let's see this. And HTC has legit cred when it comes to virtual reality. The the Vive yeah. uh, platform is a good one. I don't know if this Viverse uh, is going to be great or not. Uh, it's too early to tell. And so a, a phone that ties into all of that, that they're good at, make, makes perfect sense to it, me. They didn't even need the buzzword. It has a chance. I, I, I'll make a confession. I, I was a fan of HTC phones, especially when they were making all the Windows phones. I, I, mm -hmm. I, w I did like what they made. So they... To me, they legitimately can make a good phone. But there is a kind of little thing in the back of my head is like, is there a chance? And I'll tell you why. The other day, uh, I got sent a, a, a video, and it was a depiction of what the metaverse could be. Mm -hmm. And here in the D.C. area, we have a music called Go Go Music. This was born and bred in the area, you know, started on buckets. And, you know, it, it's just in this area is huge and not too much anywhere else, but they had a metaverse that was a go-go oh. and the little character walked into the go-go. The music was playing. They, you could see people at the bar and I was like, what a brilliant kind of video to kind of tout this. So I was like, if something as obscure as go-go music in our area made like a video like that, where it kind of made sense to people, maybe, you know, HCC is, might be onto something to at least attach themselves to, to the idea of the metaverse. So it's kind of interesting to me. Yeah, this this is one of those stories we're going to be talking about again in April, and we'll have a better idea then of whether this is legit or right, not, right? Because right. we'll see what they're actually doing with it. Um, so even as much as I don't love them saying metaverse 
uh, I, I get why they did it gets them more attention. Right. And they may be able to follow it up. But like you said, they, they said blockchain phone, which was an eye roller and, and then followed it up with b real blockchain stuff. The argument is whether blockchain is worth it or not, not, not right. whether the phone actually delivered. I agree. All right. How about this one? I kind of adore this product, but there are problems with it. Uh, U.S. startup Kana, C-A-N-A, -A, has a new take on a home beverage dispenser, but it's not like SodaStream or other similar setups that use pods. This one can make any beverage off the same cartridge. They, they liken it to 3D printing drinks. The machine uses a cartridge of flavoring that has 84 ingredients that they say they can deliver in the perfect precise proportions to create almost any flavor profile from coffee to tea to a mimosa. The flavor cartridge does have to be combined with some raw material cartridges. So there's a sugar cartridge, an alcohol cartridge if you wanna do alcoholic drinks, a carbonation cylinder, and then of course your water reservoir uh, because most of every drink is water. You use all four of those to create your drink. The device has a touch screen on the front where you select the type of drink you want. Now, for now, it can only do clear cold drinks. So it can do a version of cold brew coffee. It can do a grapefruit sparkling water. Kana says it's working on a future versions of the device that could replicate viscosity, opacity, and pulp, and also maybe do hot drinks, but those aren't there yet. This Kana machine, though, detects when your cartridge is near empty and can automatically ship you a refill. Cartridges should last about a month, according to Kana. Here's where it gets interesting. The drink menu is provided by Kana, and it includes drinks created by brands like the Hella Cocktail Company. You can replicate their, you know, their bottled cocktails, and recipes from creators like Simone Gertz, the, the YouTuber that does all the robotics stuff, all the cool robotics stuff. Mm. You can customize their recipes to your preferred level of alcohol, sugar, caffeine, vitamins, and other supplements, you just can't create a recipe from scratch. At least it doesn't seem like you can. But it gets even more interesting. The cartridges are free. So it automatically reorders cartridges when you need them. It does have to be on Wi-Fi. That's how it gets the recipes too. And you don't have to pay for the cartridges. Instead, you're like, well, how do you make money? You pay per drink. Sparkling water, 29 cents. Iced tea, 79 cents. Craft cocktail, $2.99. Uh, if you want to try this out, you can reserve one right now for 99 bucks. The first 10,000 orders will be sold for $499. The regular price of the machine will be $799. And they say sales will start sometime early 2023. This is one of those stories that are, is a complete roller coaster. Because when I heard, hear the initial idea of it, I just want to be like, get out of here. But then as you get into it, I'm starting, my mind starts to wander. It's like, oh, wait a minute. This, this could be pretty cool. And then you come with a sledgehammer. <laughs> you got to pay per drink. And it's like, ah, oh, man, it was, it was so close to being super you almost had me. <laughs> you know, because who does not want to walk into a room? And tell me this thing will at some point have voice activation. And, you know, once they get to the hot, who oh, doesn't want to walk too. into a room and be like Earl Grey hot? Who doesn't yes. want to do that? It's so close, right? Why right. not? You're right uh, there. Yeah. So, but uh, the the pay per drink is is a killer to me because the problem with it is the psychological effect of it. When I'm home, I want to get stuff out of my refrigerator because I'm like, I bought it here, so I don't have to go out and pay for it. Yeah. So that's a huge bummer when you're at home and you're still paying for, you know, those you think along those lines with food and drink. You know, obviously when you're internet or buying movies, it's a, the mindset is different. So I don't know how they're going to get people to get past that portion of it. With that I... said. Everything else is pretty cool because there's a uh, have you ever heard of the uh, life fuels? No, what's life fuels? So life fuels is like a bottle um, that you can carry around like those, you know, but it has like the different drinks or syrups, if you will, at the bottom of the bottle. Oh, and then okay. it has an app on your phone that allows you to, you know, put in your recipes and make, so it's almost identical to this, except it's portable. And my yeah, buddy yeah. has one of these and he swears by it. And it's probably less precise or less wide variety, maybe. I'm guessing, yeah, and then you just, just the you manually change the cartridges in the bottom. It takes like uh -huh. four, 
But uh, it, but it looks so cool that I was like, I was really interested in seeing what he did with it. So it's kind of the, the concept is already exists, and this is something you can buy today. Um, so the I like, I like the start of this, but I man, it, where it ended kind of hurt me. <laughs> yeah, I love the idea. Like this is brilliant. Don't don't sell me pods. Uh, just make a machine that can replicate any profile. Now, I start to get weird when I'm like, okay, but you're not really having a mimosa because there's no actual orange juice in here. Right. Uh, so, but they, the the people at The Verge who tested this were like, but it tasted like a mimosa. It wasn't bad. It, it's at least as good as any other bottled drink you'd get off the shelf at your grocery store. So I, I'm starting to come back in like, okay, it yes. wouldn't replace everything, but exactly. but I, I'm, I'm into this idea. And the fact that they, they have this, Com combination of, of things where I could get like a cold coffee. Maybe someday they'll have a hot version. I'll try it. So I think the technology is, is wonderful and promising Absolutely. and I cannot wait to try it. That well, business you, plan though, uh, I just, yeah. I mean, I know they're trying to say like, Oh, these prices are less than you'd pay at the grocery store. Sure. But, but. it's the psychology, you nailed it. It's yeah. like, even if they're not showing me the price every time I, I use the touchscreen, I, I would I never, know I'm paying. I, yeah. You know, I, I tell you what, the better model to me would have been you don't own the machine, you lease the machine. Then it would have been a little bit more palatable, right? It's like I wonder if at some point they change to say like, oh, you can either pay per drink or buy the cartridges. Yeah. And, and or, you know, and I'm sure they'll have like the, you know, you get the first 50 free or whatever, or, you know, you buy packages and then once you go past that, it's two ninety nine. Uh, hopefully, if they're smart, then that could kind of alleviate my anxiety around using this. But, you know, I just imagine the, the reason why it's so interesting to me as well is because, you know, when you read about how they came up with Beyond Meat and how they came up with Impossible, they had uh, scientists in a lab recreating and figuring out what it is, what is the texture, what is the flavor that makes you, that when you bite into something that you're like, yeah. oh, that's meat. That's the iron from the bud and all of that stuff. But so I imagine they did the same thing, right? Because they're not giving you the same ingredients, but they're like, if we put this and this and this together, yeah, that's orange soda right there. You yeah. know, that's It's like know, an MP3. They're like, there's, there's all parts of the drink that don't affect the flavor. So we'll, we found a compression algorithm that figures out what parts are the parts you notice. And that's right. the parts we put in the cartridge that has the flavor. But the idea that they could disrupt the soda industry, uh -huh. you know, it's, 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 it, I like it, right? Because now you're going to have Coca-Cola sending you machines and <laughs> at the house that are home-based and, you know, and, and Pepsi and all of those guys doing the same thing. So I, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to keep my eye on this and definitely want to wait to see what you say about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try it out. I can't, I can't not the technology, the business model may be flawed, but the technology is too good. to It's to, super to dope. Uh, cleans itself and it has parental controls. You also can operate it without alcohol. You can say like, don't send me the alcohol cartridge. So I know people probably had questions about that. Yeah. All right. Tell us about this wall street journal article. Okay. So the wall street journal has an article about how the popularity of at home COVID-19 tests is causing some companies to develop at home tests for other things. Detect Incorporated, which makes an at-home COVID-19 test, is working on at-home flu and strep throat tests. A San Diego company called Q is also working on at-home tests for flu and chlamydia. The interest is also making an argument for loosening up regulatory holdups. Currently, some tests that could be done in home are only allowed in a doctor's office or pharmacy. LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics are offering home tests for fertility blood, iron level, and cancer. These are not rapid tests requiring the samples to be chipped in, chi uh, shipped in in order to, uh, or dropped off in a collection center. LabCorp is considering including some rapid tests that give you the results at home. Results of rapid tests are usually less accurate than lab-reviewed ones, so just keep that in mind. One way forward would be to use a rapid test for an immediate result, which is what we do today, right? And then, but still mail it in for laboratory confirmation. And regulators also want to make sure consumers aren't confused between what is a positive and what is a negative result. What do you think? Yeah, this is this is an interesting article. It's a it's a little bit short on on a lot of details, uh, but but I'm I'm curious at the fact that this is a uh, 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 another example of innovation coming out of necessity. Nobody wanted to have to deal with COVID, but because we did, because we were forced to, people are now looking at it and saying, well, we figured out how to do rapid at home tests for COVID. 
what else can we do with that? And how can we make people's right. lives better? I, th I think that's fascinating. Yeah, this is really cool uh, uh, to me because, you know, I have a stack of uh, COVID tests here, you know, um, especially when I had a, my brother was living with me and, mm. you know, we had to be super careful. Sure. Um, so but uh, another thing that kind of dawned on me is like my wife and um, unfortunately my daughter, they chronically get uh, strep throat. And uh, every time my wife goes to the urgent care, they test her like, you don't have it. And my wife's mm. like, I know I have it. I get it all the time. And so to avoid that headache of doing that, you know what I mean? It could just yeah. be, let me test at home, you know, and I, cause I'm pretty, you know, she knows Maybe the she signs. Maybe she can catch it because she doesn't have to wait until she can exactly. get into the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, we talked about this a long time ago, cause I think when the last time we had a conversation around the innovation through tragedy, um, I, it was uh, when there was a new watch or a band that reminded oh, you yeah. to keep your hands away from your face. Right. So, you know, even though, th you know, there's tons of tragic stories around this COVID, the one thing I said is I always love to see the innovation that comes out of this. And this is definitely something that we could, uh, you know, definitely benefit from. Hey, folks, you like what we talk about on the show? Uh, one way to let us know is in our subreddit. Uh, you can affect what we talk about. We get a lot of these ideas from the subreddit. So go there, submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Users on Korea's Miko forum have been posting a list of apps they say are throttled by Samsung's Game Optimization Service, or GOS. Uh, GOS is meant to improve gameplay uh, on Samsung phones. The list on the forum has around 10,000 apps, including some of Samsung's own apps, like Bixby and the Secure Folder. Uh, no benchmark apps seem to be affected, though, and that's raising some eyebrows. Korean researcher and YouTube creator Garyon Han changed the name of the 3D Mark benchmark app to the name of one of the apps on the list, and the benchmarking score of the Samsung phone went from 2,618 to 1,141. That's 56% worse just by changing the name. Android Authority could not find the game optimization service on all of its Samsung Galaxy phones, didn't find it on its S22, it did find it on its S21+. Plus. So that implies it may have arrived in an update for some, but not all users. Naver's source says Samsung is looking into the reports, but Samsung hasn't spoken publicly about it. And if this sounds familiar, last July, OnePlus admitted that its latest phones throttled apps to save battery life and reduce heat. Apple has dealt with a similar issue where it was throttling things to save battery life. Geekbench delisted the OnePlus 9 from its Android benchmark chart uh, back last July until OnePlus tweaked the settings. We'll see if they do a similar thing with Samsung here. Yeah, I don't like this one bit. If I buy a phone and you tout all these capabilities of the phone, don't then give me these capabilities because you're doing some shady business on the back end. I, if I want the option to turn on battery saving game functionality, let me turn that on. And you know, despite what they may or may not say, there's no way you left the benchmarking apps off <laughs> and be like, oh, my bad. No, come on. This is silliness. Uh, it's not that big a deal, but it does it does reek of some cheating going on yeah. here. No, you just you just have to be uh, upfront. It's That's fine it. to exempt the benchmark uh, and say, like, look, we want the benchmark apps to be able to test the whole phone. We have this battery saving service that can go on. Right. You as a user could turn it on or off. The benchmarking apps can turn it on or off. Uh, ju just be upfront and everybody's fine with this because everybody likes to save battery. The, sure. What happened with Apple, Apple was trying to save your battery when it got to the end of its life and just wasn't telling you. People right. were upset that they were trying to save your right. battery. They were upset that you didn't let them control it and then you didn't tell them it was happening. Exactly. If I'm gaming, I want to turn it off. But the rest of the time, yeah, sure, I don't mind it being on. Yeah, if you can save me battery life, of course, save me battery life. But when I'm trying to do something on my phone, like, and because it even affected uh, Microsoft apps, and I can't tell you how many yeah. times I've edited docs on, on my phone while I'm on a plane, I'm getting ready to go for a presentation, like, oh, here's a typo here, and this thing is taking forever to load. No way, you know, I don't, I don't want that at all. So I would rather them be upfront and say, we have this thing installed. It could slow down your app. Um, and honestly, the benchmark apps would have been their best friends in this scenario because then you could see here's what the app functions like with it on. Here's what the app functions yep. like yep. when it's off. You make totally. the choice. But they just excluded them. And then, you know, so th to me, that's, it, that was just a complete wrong way to go about this.
All right. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of different products coming out of Mobile World Congress this week. Uh, here's one <laughs> that caught our eye. Go Sleep, an air purifier, wireless charger, Bluetooth speaker, mood light, and a light level of carbon dioxide emitter designed to help induce sleep. Go Sleep touted its tech by including a 2018 paper by Stephen Snow describing how elevated carbon dioxide concentration indoors stimulates the part of the brain that controls heartbeat and respiration. The Wired went and talked to Snow and said, hey, do you know these people are using your paper? And Snow said, yeah, my paper's findings don't really correlate with Go Sleep's claims. He said he was studying the effect of CO2 on work ability, not sleep. And he said, it's not technically a correct attribution to this specific paper. Go Sleep is also doing their own research on the safety and effectiveness of their product. That's ongoing, hasn't been published yet. But here's how it works. It's made by a South Korea-based company called NYX, has a long rectangular arm that floats over you when you're asleep, distributing the sleep air, in other words, CO2, along with an aroma and ASMR sounds to kind of, you know, drift you off to sleep for about 15 minutes. It has a replaceable CO2 canister in its base. Once you're asleep, it analyzes your environment, including humidity, temperature, CO2 concentration, light levels, and noise. Set to launch in South Korea in April for $2,000 with a U.S. rollout coming this summer and more markets after that in 2023. Another bummer of a product because I have this quest to sleep better for years and years. I want to sleep better. Expensive, super expensive bed made a difference. Different, you know, pills you take made a difference. And I'm like, ooh, a device I can put next to my bed and, oh, and possibly never wake up? No, thank <laughs> you. Okay. I'm going to start a service and hire MMA fighters to go to your house and help you sleep. What the heck, man? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm always the one who's like, it probably isn't as bad as it sounds, or it sounds crazy, but it might work. In this case, it probably isn't as bad as it sounds. I'm going to assume that they don't want to kill their, their customer base. And so it's right. probably using a light amount of CO2, but uh, it's probably ineffective. Uh, and any, either, any way you look at it, it's a bad marketing pitch saying, I'm going to pump your room full of CO2. You know, the thing that we have too much of in the right. atmosphere. Right. Uh, also the thing that, you know, people use to kill themselves in garages. In fact, their marketing pitch says, ever felt drowsy in a closed car? <laughs> like, no, come on, read the room. That's, that's, that's how, this is bad. How long before there is a movie where this is the device that's hacked? And wrong. These... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, I mean, I, I think it has to get, uh, and, and granted, everybody's saying in a garage it's carbon monoxide, not carbon dioxide. Right. Fair point, but... But still, people are going to make that association. <laughs> All right, uh, let's check out the mailbag. Ernest wrote in, uh, the $700 mosquito repellent sounds like a great product for the hospitality industry. I think that theme parks, outdoor restaurants, and shopping malls, hotels, resorts, and event venues would shell out the coin to keep the bugs away if it would improve the client experience to get more butts in the seats. Yeah, That's I like it. that too. Uh, yeah. I $700 is a lot for my backyard. Unless it really works, or and I live in you know New Orleans where the mosquitoes are really bad, uh, or Houston. Uh, if that but, really worked, I would be all in. I don't yeah. care what the cause. I hate mosquitoes, and when I'm out back smoking food, and you know they just seem to love my backyard, and I've done everything in my power. Yeah, I short of hiring the you know I always get to knock on the door. Hey, do you want us to take care of your mosquito problem? No, get out of here. Yeah, you know, I can I can put something up myself. But you know if they came up with something that was definitive, yeah, I'd, I'd be in. Good news. Allison Sheridan says a member of her family is moving to Houston and she's going to make them buy this <laughs> to protect themselves. So we may, we may find out if it works. Well, awesome. we'll get Allison to report back. Uh, thanks to our brand new bosses. We have new folks uh, joining us today and very happy to have you. Jason, Sakani, Nate, and Adam. Uh, just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Jason, Sakani, Nate, and thank you, Adam. Uh, we are just going to go to thanking people by first name uh, just to be safe. But uh, but we still fully, fully thank you. And we'll shout you out if you become a new boss, patreon.com slash DTNS. Of course, busily illustrating today's show has been Len Peralta. Len, what have you drawn for us today? You know, there's so many great things uh, on today's show. I decided to go with the uh, the Metaverse phone. What that's going to look like, it's so great because we don't even know what it's going to look like. 
So uh, this is, a, it's called Phone Dial You. It's in the metaverse, <laughs> the phone dials you. That's the only like iteration. like a Yakov Smirnoff reference? <laughs> exactly. That's okay. the only iteration so far that I know that uh, the phone hasn't dialed us. We're always dialing the phone. So we're going to flip it around and make it a little bit different. So, uh, so yeah, that's my, that's what I say is going to happen with the metaverse phone. If you would like this print, go to my uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Len. It's also on my online store. Online store is Len Peralta store. Dot com. That phone's about to eat someone. You're going to want to see this. Go check it out. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chris Ashley. Uh, what do you got going on today to tell folks about? Hey, you can always find you boy with his two homies on the SMR podcast recording every week talking tech. And uh, yeah, uh, new episodes of Barbecue and Tech are in the hopper. So we'll be putting that out soon. Uh, starting out probably with some Super Bowl recap and some pulled pork and stuff and moving on from there. So cool stuff coming up. My mouth is already watering. Go get that, folks. Uh, sign up now so you don't miss the new episodes, bbqandtech.com. We are live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern for now. That's changing on March 15th, 2130 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with back-to-back -back SMR podcast host Rob Dunwood's with us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>